Hi students, I am Dr. Siddharth Sethi and today I am here on Facebook to discuss with you a new hormone and a new therapy. It's very important for your exam and uh, I am Dr. Siddharth Sethi. You can always find me on Facebook and on Dams Club. So first of all, when we talk about the phosphorus metabolism today, you need to know that most of our phosphorus is absorbed with the help of vitamin D by acting on the intestine. Okay. Now, number two, now phosphorus in our body is reabsorbed or resorbed basically with the help of PTH by acting on the bone and the kidneys. Now, today we will be concentrating on a new hormone, which is very important for your exams called FGF 23 subtype. Now, what is FGF 23? it acts on two places number one it acts on the proximal tubular channel called sodium phosphate co-transporter by acting at this sodium phosphorus co-transporter channel this fgf 23 reduces the absorption of phosphorus okay so less phosphorus goes to the blood so remember specially it acts at this channel sodium phosphorus co-transporter 2a and 2c and it reduces the absorption of phosphorus into the blood by acting at the kidney proximal to be now what fgf 23 exactly does is it is a phosphatonin that is it reduces the serum phosphorus by acting at the kidney i told you the proximal tubular cells remember fgf 23 is secreted by osteocytes with the help of clotho, it is a co-receptor for FGF23 and FGF receptor. So basically, just remember these are two receptors. It leads to reduce phosphorus absorption in the kidney. Number two, FGF23 reduces the 1-alpha hydroxylase of the vitamin D. So in a way, it reduces the active vitamin D and reduces the absorption of phosphorus into the intestine so again it leads to reduce serum phosphorus now what are the what is the most important stimulus of fgf23 increased serum phosphorus so for example in patients who have chronic kidney disease now all of us know that in fact whenever the mineral bone disease occurs in chronic kidney disease the first marker which rises is fgf23 even before pth okay so in kidney disease, chronic kidney disease, FGF23 rises first. Now, it may also rise if you have a disease, for example, X-linked hypophosphatemic rickets because of a mutation in the FEX gene. Remember FEX gene? It can also happen in some tumors which secrete FGF23. Okay, so there are some tumors, for example, fibrous dysplasia, epidermal nervous syndrome. I remember when I was in All India Institute, almost 10 years back this is 10 years back 2010 at all india institute we found a child who had these nevi on his body and had very severe hypophosphatemia we published that in a journal and removal of these nevi improved his rickets now today i am talking to you about a very important kind of rickets called x-linked dominant hypophosphatemic rickets it's called x-linked dominant hypophosphatemic rickets which is more severe in boys remember this is the most common phosphorus wasting disorder because of mutation in the fex gene and in this disorder also there is high plasma fgf23 now uh, i'm not in all india institute right now i'm in i'm a pediatric nephrologist at a hospital in gurgaon so i have collaborated with multiple doctors in us in michigan and we've been working on FEX mutations in children whom we see with hypophosphatemic rickets. Now, why am I talking about this? Is that the pathogenesis of hypophosphatemic rickets is increased FGF23 from the osteocytes, which leads to low serum phosphorus and also reduced 1 alpha hydroxylation. So, till now, friends, the treatment of X linked hypophosphatemic rickets was to supplement these children with phosphorus and to give them active vitamin d now students remember 
that you will be given a case scenario in your exam a child who has low serum phosphorus increased alkaline phosphatase rickets more in the lower limbs a normal pth remember normal pth is striking because this is not vitamin d deficiency this is phosphate urea phosphate loss causing rickets now why am i talking about this today because in the last two years what has happened is there was a very big study published in the new england journal where they found that you can use a new monoclonal antibody called borosumab borosumab inhibits fgf23 it is a new monoclonal antibody and it has been found that this borosumab maintains the serum phosphorus levels in these children and now this is the drug of choice it's a subcutaneous injection and it's fda approved and even in our country there are some children who have been already started on borosumab so remember about this new hormone and this new therapy and i bet it's gonna come in your exam i'm dr siddharth sethi a pediatric nephrologist and your pediatric faculty signing off and stay tuned for more videos in future thank you